everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today is a step-by-step live watercolor class where you can paint along with me at home. I'm going to explain every technique, material, tool, everything that I'm doing in detail in simple terms so that even if you've never painted before, you can understand what I'm talking about. You can have exactly the materials that I'm using, which you will find in the description below and also a link to our blog just to talk about our watercolor classes in general. But also, there's an echo, baby. Ooh, I'll go get that. On the mic is my husband, John, (laughs) who's about to go turn off my computer. This is a live stream. Uh, uh, My husband, John, is my co-host. And what he's going to do to help you see my techniques and the things that I'm doing is we have robotic cameras and they zoom in. So you can really see the watercolor bloom. You can see everything. If you don't have my exact materials, just use the watercolors that you have. A lot of times... It's just much more important that you get a technique or a value than have the exact shade of blue, Uh, especially for these sort of ocean paintings. I don't think it's that critical. But again, I won't ever hide from you what I'm using. I'll always be very forthcoming what it is. Um, But I think it's okay just to use what you have. Are you ready for this, John? This is our inaugural. This is video one of our, we have another YouTube channel, which is pretty, pretty established. Uh, but this is our first watercolor on YouTube official channel video. We're starting at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So if you're here, you're here at the beginning. Ignore the videos you already see here. We had a weird experimentation that we were doing. Now, we're not painting this today. We're, we're painting what you saw on the thumbnail. Um, I will make sure that you guys have the finished painting as a reference and a traceable at the end of this. And those resources will be free. I'm going to get smaller during the video so that you can see the techniques. But this is an example of the type of look and effect in the finish that we're going to be going for. These are previous classes that we did. Um, I'm going to throw my artwork on the ground because that's how that goes. (laughs) So, materials. You guys ready? I think so. I can't believe we're live over here. I can't believe it either. So crazy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You Mm. can't get overexcited because we have steps. I have to tell materials and then steps. Okay, then. I know. We're just making sure. Materials and then steps. Prepared. So I have a 9 by 12 uh, block of 140-pound cold-pressed watercolor paper. Okay. The words that you guys want to be kind of aware of is 140-pound cold-pressed watercolor paper. Watercolor paper goes up to 300 pounds, but you don't really want to do it on anything less than 90. I think 90 really is tough. So 140-pound cold-pressed watercolor paper is my personal favorite. The brand I'm using is... Fabriano, Fabriano, uh, it's the extra white. I really like it. It's a block, which means all of the edges are kind of glued together, as you can see. And I've got to tape that down a little bit because <laughs> I got a little rough with my block, guys. I did. I got rough with the block. Um, so what that does is it prevents the buckling that you may have run into in watercolor, or if you've never watercolored before, the paper buckles. Because as it gets wet, the fibers kind of warp, and so it buckles. I also have brushes for watercolor painting. I'm going to probably be focused mostly on my soft aqua, which is nice, big, nice, round kind of wash. It's a quill. And then I have these fabulous looking twisty brushes. You don't have to have this exact brush. This is an Escoda watercolor that has been redone by the artist Jasper Stardust. Um, But really, you're just looking for a number eight round. I also have another Escoda. Uh, This is a little Perla, which is a synthetic. This is a number 12. So anything between these two sizes and around for watercolor guys is going to work for you. I'll tell you what I'm using, but you just use what you have. I'm also going to be using, now this is kind of critical, I think. To do these splashy effects on these waves, it's really great to have a product called a liquid frisket or a masking agent. So basically this is a byproduct of a plant. It's a latex and it has a little bit of ammonia in it, which is why you get a funny smell and water. All the other friskets don't do any of the things that I'm about to show you today. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm sorry for that. I just want to tell you. So where, where I'm doing a technique you couldn't do with another frisket, I will let you know that this is a incredible white mask only um, product. I'm going to give you a lot of tips and tricks about frisket and how to put out frisket, how not to damage your brushes, and different things that you can do to have better results, whether you're using my frisket or not. And then where it's specific, like I'm using a hairdryer or something, and you cannot do that with another frisket, I'll be like, and this is where you let your painting dry for two hours. <laughs> so I'll let you know where that is. So we're going to be using this, and I'm also going to be using 
a rubber cement picker upper. I will be using a splattering tool um, to to uh, splatter out my first gate. And you can use, I, this is an actual specific brush that I developed, but you can absolutely use a stiff tooth, toothbrush. Colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, Payne's Gray, Nickel Ozzo Yellow, Hans Yellow Medium, Pyro Red, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Opera Pink, Transparent Pyro Orange, Burnt Umber, Quinacridone Gold, Payne, uh, uh, Thalo Green. So here's the thing on the colors. I'm just using these for 2021 because I don't want you to have to keep going buying and buying and buying. I won't use every color today. These are the colors that will be here every week because we're going to meet every week at Wednesday. Are we? Yes. Ooh. Every week, Wednesday, even through, every... even through the big program I'm doing on my other channel. And this is what we're painting today. There's the reference for you guys until uh, we get that up. How you doing, baby? You ready to put up step I one? I am ready. Step one. Are you ready for a step one? I think so. I'm, it's so, you know, I, I, I was button. doing these on Facebook, but I'm so nervous to be doing them on YouTube. It's so weird how nervous I am. I'm going to ask you for a favor anyways, though, in a second. Okay. So I'm going to take out... A tool. This is a uh, credit co color graphite aquarelle pencil. You could just use a regular HB school pencil. Um, I'm an artist, so I have a lot of great tools, and it's good to pay attention to what I'm using because I have good finds. But a lot of times, there's a very simple alternate that you could use, and in this case, an HB pencil. But what I want to do is set a very uh, determined and absolute horizon line and I want it to be level when we're painting an ocean and if you can see the horizon it's very important that distant horizon be as level as possible so what I'm going to use is a t-square ruler it has a nice little head here and it gives me a nice straight measurement I'm going to take this pencil and make the lightest line possible do, 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 kind of going um, just a little past halfway past that point so I know where it is and all this is going to do is let me know to keep my horizon line here very level and not do any of my wave effect because otherwise it'll throw off the whole composition of the painting it's a weird thing that if you're a beginner you might not be familiar with you might not ever have dealt with and it will absolutely impact your overall um event now normally i just have a whole traceable ready for you guys and i will make a traceable from this that you can download and use and if you've never used a traceable search the art sherpa how to trace and you'll find two videos on that um, but for right now, I'm just going to sketch it in freehand if that's okay. How is, or do we have anybody here? It says a oh new gosh, channel. Oh my gosh, there's so many people here. Just, I see Amy and Linda and Linda Sue and Linda Harvey and Tammy and Mary and Tina and Deborah. Man, we just got, I see a lot of, a lot of our friendly faces here. That is so cool. I'm going to bring this little kind Joy of. Joy is here. Brenda Joy, is here. Joy, you're going to love here. this. And Cindy is here. So we're bringing in the waves, right? We're bringing this in. This is the big wave that's coming kind of off of our canvas and coming down. And we've got a cool kind of wave happening over here. And then we do want to remember that we've got some really fun splashiness. And I'm being very light with this because, you know, maybe as I paint it, I might change my mind. And then up front here, we have this sort of white, I don't know. <laughs> I forgot to put it on airport mode. That's okay. Because somebody was calling the mods. Well, I know it was. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Very few structural lines. Notice that they're very light. Now, this pencil is a graphite pencil. It does all the things that traditional really good drawing pencil does. But it's also a aqua activated pencil, so it behaves like watercolor as well. That's very lovely to use if you're doing watercolor all the time. Not necessary here. Again, HB pencil is fine. Um... We're going to sit there and say that uh, this is step one. And what will happen is in, uh, we'll kind of, I'll put the traceable over this. You can kind of see the layout on online on the website. Mm -hmm. um, and that way you kind of understand how that goes. I'll make sure that's on the page. Okay. Ready for a step? <sighs> I'm ready for a step. Step two. And we will timestamp these so you can find your place again. So one of the things that we. Picture that one. Huh? You're, you're going to put the, the, the trace. You're going to do pictures there. today, too? Sure. Wonderful. Okay. So <laughs> it's so amazing. Um, but the other very important thing, take a picture, I guess, so we don't lose it, um, is 
these will be time stamped. And the thing about the time stamping in the description is, is that when you drag your cursor over the play bar, it will chapter mark each of these events. So if you're like, I was on the sky, but I had to run out and chase the dog, you can come back and find your place again and not have to scroll through the whole video. Because you might have noticed I'm a wordy girl. If you're brand new here and you somehow got the recommendation from YouTube, <laughs> well, YouTube got you, I guess. It found you and it got you and it said, do you want to watch some live art that is different than maybe other live art you've watched? That's what happened to you. <laughs> The camera is not going to be able to see the white paper. Did you focus on the wrong thing? So other tools that's nice to have around when you're doing watercolor is low tack tape. Art tape doesn't tear the paper and that's very, very important when you're doing watercolor. Um, all the tapes that you see utilized uh, are low tack tape. But one funny thing that you can do is you can use washi tape. Ooh, what's washi tape? Washi tape is the pretty fancy tape over on the crafting side of Michael's. Hmm. Right? So you have one side is the arty side. That's my side. And over far away is the crafty side is washi tape. So $8 art tape or a bunch of washi tape, but they're both low tack and they can both work well. I use the recollections because often it's on sale. That is the whole of that. Now, if you've never watercolored before, I'm going to tell you something very important. Lean in. All right. The paint only goes where the water is. So if your paper is very wet, the color will go everywhere the paper is wet. If the paper is dry, the color will only go where you put it with the brush. These are the two fundamental concepts of watercolor. If you can master these first two things, everything else is just a groovy technique along the way. So that's one thing that you've got to remember. The other thing is, is that sometimes in watercolor, you have to make a plan or strategy because unlike acrylic, we paint from lightest to darkest and our white is the paper. So if you've been doing acrylic or some other type of medium, the white is the paper. Here's where the liquid mask comes into play. Now I'm going to open up my liquid mask and you can see it's kind of making its little booger in the lid. Mm -hmm. What is a problem, there are many, many problems with liquid masking agent, many, many. Here are some things you need to know. Don't shake it, okay. turn it slowly. If you get air bubbles in it, it will cause it to start to cure and booger up. So this is, this is not a James Bond martini. No, Stirred, and this shaken. is confusing for people if you buy the one that's orange, because the orange all settles, the, it's terrible mask, but it settles all to the bottom and not everywhere. And you want to shake it up to disperse it, but that is what throws off your mask. Don't leave the cap off. You don't want air to get into this. You want to keep this aside. I don't use more than an eight ounce bottle of this. Really, the two is great because you're going to use it up before it goes bad. And then you can save the twos. I pour it out into a separate area, right? Because I know how much I'm going to use. And then that keeps the rest of my mask pristine and good. So those are very important mask things. The other thing is, is that you want soapy water for your brush. And you're not going to use your good brush. You're going to use a sacrificial brush. This is my masking brush. <laughs> so you want a separate water that's soapy for your brush. In this particular area, I'm also going to use a splattering tool. Now, I've got some really cool clouds, but I want to show you some cool stuff with clouds. So we're going to make some really fun cloud line shapes. Now, if you've not done clouds, I have so many videos, but they're for another medium on clouds. But what I'll tell you is, is clouds like to wander. They are a hot mess. They have very soft and diffused edges. Watercolor kind of lends itself to this. And I am going to mask my clouds a little bit. I'm gonna get my brush a little wet. I'm gonna grab my masking agent. And I'm going to paint a little bit of my clouds that I might have with my masking agent. When it dries, it's going to preserve the white of the paper no matter how watery I get, no matter what I do. And that will help keep that white, bright paper safe. Safe, 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 safe. Uh, be careful when you're opening up your mask. It can go... <laughs> 
and then you have weird little white <laughs> snowflakes in your sky. Mm -hmm. Weird thing you might not know. Uh, next week's class, I'm going to do what I call one hoot, which is like a super kind of painting party beginner painting. So if you're like, man, I've been looking for a water class, but maybe not as many techniques as this, come back. I've got that coming up as well. Because I know what that's like. And I'm going to also come along my wave here. And I'm going to make a little tapping, 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 because I want kind of a splashy effect. Oh, Rinse out often. Rinse out often. And John, I'm going to have you get me a secondary cup of water. Okay. Uh, during our next step. I'm also going to kind of brush down. I'm brushing over the masking fluid. Brushing in a curve because where the white waves, right, where they curve over, you want to capture that and preserve that. That's really nice to, to kind of capture. Rinse out a bit. Now, thinner is better, okay? So you don't need it to be super thick. I am going to come along the top of this here. And again, Preserving the paper. Thank you. We used to do these like uh, live from Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, but today we are we launched the new channel. So. Believe it or not, this is a class bazillion D into a series of classes. Amy, really but it's your class one. Well, Amy says she really appreciates you demoing these techniques. It really helps. Well. You know, once if if you can see it, you can do it, right? But a lot of times it's hard to find resources that will let you see it. Now, with Frisket, you want it to go on to dry, dry, dry paper, and you have to remove it when the paper is dry. If you try to remove it when the paper is wet, it's going to tear the paper. There's some very advanced Frisket techniques that kind of break those rules. And I will be sure to demo those for you guys. But for the basic purposes of basic frisket, dry and dry. Now, I'm going to get to use my hair dryer. Uh, that is the beauty of white mask. White mask can actually be exposed to a little bit of sunlight and it can be exposed to a little bit of heat. It can even be a little bit frozen maybe once. All other frisket can't do any of those things. Hmm. Cannot do it. You cannot freeze your frisket. You cannot heat your frisket. Your frisket is much like a tropical fish. It has a very narrow range of happiness. And so if you're buying another brand or you happen to have another brand that you want to use up before you try this brand, um, you will want to let your paper dry between these techniques I'm demoing at least an hour till it's bone dry. Gotcha. So like once the frisket is down, you want to give the paper about an hour to bone dry if you're using a different frisket. And uh, once the watercolor is down, you're going to want to, again, give it another hour to dry. If you're doing 300-pound paper, you probably already know this because why would you buy 300-pound paper <laughs> if you weren't really familiar with all these things? But maybe you don't. You, uh, it will tear longer than 140 pound, so um, you need to give it a longer drying cycle. What I'm doing here is trying to capture the white areas of the water. And I want to make sure that those are sort of held out. There's also some fun stuff we can do here. Like we can come down and wiggle. This particular, this type of wave painting in watercolor, if you want to really capture these foamy bits, white foamy waves, you need the frisket. Or, because I always have an or. If you paint with me on any of my other channels, you know this, I always have an or. Or you can use gouache or a white acrylic at the end to add the white back into your particular piece. Ah. Now we're also going to come here into the arc. And I am tapping out a series of reflections which are in the curve. They're arcing in the curve of the wave. 
I can't believe the cameras are picking this up, John. It's, you know, we have really good cameras and it's very subtle stuff, but I can, I could probably even enhance it a little more if I wanted. Let me see what I could do. Oh, there, there it goes. That's amazing. So I don't do the stained frisket because uh, I hate it. I hate that brand. Um, <laughs> they're, I'm not saying they're not good people. I don't, I don't know anybody over there. I'm just saying I like this brand. This is the one that I'm, I'm the other artwork I do is acrylic and I don't have the patience for nonsense. Mm. That's really what it is. John can tell you, I, I don't have any patience for the nonsense. Now, other places that we can kind of also enjoy off friskets. Let's add some sea foam. So everywhere this is, it's going to just stay white. And I am light with my pressure. I'm letting the line break and be irregular because that's what sea foam is like. It does, it does its own stuff. And so if you want your oceans to feel like that, You've got to mimic those textures and those techniques. Ah. So we're going to just also, a lot of frisket on this one. You can see why I poured out so much. Add the little sea foaming areas out here. I'm wiggling my brush. I touch my brush up and down. There's almost like a scoop or a uh, curve to the lines. Lots of S curves and dashes in this motion. Um, yeah. Kind of like a joy. But this work we do now makes the difference. If you're using a regular pencil and it's not going to come up in the um, finished piece, the good news is, is that a little bit of pencil in a watercolor painting is pretty normal mm -hmm. and uh, very much accepted in the medium as something you would see. So just be like, oh, well, I'm just being arty. <laughs> That's all you're doing is you're just being arty. Being arty. And again, this is such a great way to pres preserve the white. Preserve everything and be able to kind of record foam and stuff like that. All right, last of the techniques here. Now this, if you have my splatter brush, my Galaxy set, and you're using it with frisket and you do what I did the other day when I was painting that other wave, you let the frisket dry on there. You might think to yourself, this is the end of my brush. But you should know that rubbing alcohol breaks down the liquid latex in the same way it breaks down acrylic paint. So if you soak whatever it is that you have lost to the latex in some rubbing alcohol and use tweezers to pull out the frisket boogers, it's entirely possible you might be able to restore at least a synthetic brush hmm. from complete oblivion. All right, so I've loaded some frisket into my brush. And I'm going to use the splatter technique to create some kind of upward little waves. Because when waves come back, they're kind of splashy, aren't they? Yeah. Now you could tap brushes together. I have a video, if you search the Art Sherpa How to Splatter, I have a video on different techniques for splatter that work really, really well. And you'll notice that I made a point of washing that out because I don't want the frisket boogers. This is them. We call them frisket boogers. By the way, if you don't have a rubber cement picker upper, old frisket boogers also remove frisket. <laughs> yeah. So you can keep a little jar of frisket boogers. Don't put it in your carpet, though. Don't get it in your carpet for any reason. Don't go on the carpet. Don't. don't. It's like worse than slime in your carpet. All right. This was a little heavy with the splatter, but what I have found is is that is often perfectly okay because sometimes you get a big splash and I can always come back and do some negative space painting to make it a little more articulated. Mm. Now, 
This next thing I'm going to do, if you don't have the incredible white mask, don't do it. Wait an hour, maybe two, for the frisket to completely dry. Okay. Right? Um, and that's okay. You have time. This is watercolor. Watercolor is a very chill medium, right? It's a very, very chill medium. So, but we're live and you're here for a lesson. So we're going to dry this and we can because it's the incredible that's white mask. That's the way to do it. Guess what? This is a perfect time for your heat talk because it's even more true for fish kit. It's true. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. So it, when you're when you're applying friskets or anything like that, it's important to not use heat. Um, because as you can see, even the air moving across, it can cause some of those uh, piece, those little bits of friskety stuff to move around. But uh, the important part is to not use heat. Just let the air do the curing. It'll just blow across there and do its... Um, see, she's checking to make sure that it's... Oh, maybe she's spreading some of it out too. But, yep, yeah, don't use heat. Just use the air. It does the curing and the drying and the stuff. Oh, my gosh, since you guys are here, click on the subscribe button and then on the bell so that you can get the notifications of all when you're here because this is all new stuff. So you have to, to do that stuff. I look at all of us even... I might be able to put something queued up to remind you guys. Do I have it? Do I have it? Here it is. Subscribe. Yay. So, yeah, hit the button. Don't forget to do that. That's important because this is a new channel, and it's always good to help do that. And share it with your friends. If you like to share it on Facebook, let people there know that you're doing this with us. You can post a little thing saying, check out the Sherpa's new live thing. That would totally help us out. That'd be a big deal. Um, yeah, thank you for hanging out, guys. This is, uh, this is what we do. We make free videos. And for more shameless self-promotion, we have a website where you can go buy our stuff. Actually, I don't think we got that much stuff up in there right now. We're putting it all up on Amazon very soon. As a matter of fact, I think today our first box of stuff went to Amazon Fulfillment. It's a big day, so we're kind of excited. You can stay tuned for more soap and Sherpa stuff in the Amazon store. How is it? It's, it's still pretty Sticky. tacky. So where I had the big glops, which is why I thinned them out. It, we were wondering. Yeah. Now, there's some, there's some things I can do. Like, I can paint around it as it dries. Like, I could paint this area up here as this is having a dry. What can Which you is do? what I'm probably going to do is paint some areas where I can be while this is curing the rest of the way and then hit it later on in the steps. Hmm. Right? Which actually lets me kind of, when, you're, when your frisket is drying, you may notice that some areas didn't get painted that you wanted because you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So you can always come back. And touch that up. You want to get a picture of that and then we'll I move on. Do. And Whoa. so with watercolor, it's strategy, 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 strategy. It's just knowing what the strategies are. I'm going to fling that uh, thing at you. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Just throw the art at you. It's just, it's good, right? You're good. <sighs> so hopefully this is fun. This is weird. This is new. This is live. It's watercolor live. We're going to be doing it every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, because it's Watercolor Wednesday. Now you got to get your step. Now you got to get your step, and then you got to eat my coffee. Do we? Oh, boy, I need the coffee. I've need been painting coffee. all day. <laughs> Daily painting. <laughs> Multi-day painting. Okay, I think this is step three. Sure. <laughs> we we timestamp it, so you just... Read when you drag your cursor over the video, you just catch the timestamps. It's totally fine. All right, you want to heat my coffee, and I, I will paint the thing. This. Okay, so while we're letting this have a good cure, I can paint this sort of lower area in this sort of part of the waves until I'm ready to get up into my sky. I don't have to go into my sky and then here because I have my white paper preserved, and that's really the big thing. Um, that I need. I'm going to put this here and then you can catch it whenever you get a chance. So I'm going to take, I think initially my quill. This is my number four soft aqua. You may wonder what does the number four mean? It means only in this brush line, this brush is this size because there's no standard sizing in brushes. Put my frisket water away and get my brush water over here. So I'm going to get my brush wet and I'm going to soak it for a minute. 
what you see me doing in my hand, I'm just letting the brush get some water incorporated through it. That is called uh, priming the brush. That's a good thing to do. And I will go ahead and pre-wet my paper here. You'll notice that even in the pre-wet, I'm kind of paying attention to the directionality of my brush stroke, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to grab a little of my phthalo green and my phthalo blue together. And where the paper is already wet, I'm going to just brush out a little color. So already you see what I mean about the um, color goes where things are wet. So up here, as I come up the wave, I'm going to curve this brush stroke up and I'm just putting down a little bit of color. When you're doing these very wet techniques um, with inexpensive paper, that's where you run into some trouble. Brush strokes are level out here as they come to this kind of lower wave. And then they curve up into the wave because the waves pull the water up. That's what they do. They do. That's what they do. It's all very light up here. As I go up into the wave, I'm going to continue to be very light because the waves start to allow sunlight and everything to come through. And so they are lighter than the deep ocean. I have that first kind of run of things. Now I'm going to sip my coffee. Because art is powered by coffee. Mm -hmm. Sippy, sippy. Sippy, sippy. Wait, even over here, we tip to the graveyard, girl. I'm going to take my nickel ozo yellow. You can use any yellow you have. And I'm going to make a nice kind of aquatic green. And I want it to be quite light. So I will go ahead and brush through through here. Get back into a little more phthalo. And you can see the more phthalo you get, the more it goes into those oceanic colors. I use a paper towel between my two, between my palette and everything else because you have to offload color quite a lot. It gives you control over how much water is on your brush. And again, we're doing these big soft events right now. Mm. These are soft. And I'm gonna go above here because that's where, where I might have sunlight or something else is happening on that wave. The bottom of the wave will always be darker. So I can take my ultramarine blue my phthalo blue and a little bit of phthalo green, more ultramarine blue. And here at the base, start to put some much darker blue. I like to just sort of tap it out. You'll notice I'm on the toe of the brush. I'm not going down into this area too much yet. And we're working pretty fast. Um, I'm not switching brushes. And again, you don't have to have this brush. I'm just, the reason I'm not switching brushes is you wanna work while the paper is wet because what you see here is what's called blooming. That's where the paint begins to disperse through the areas of the paper that are already wet. So you wanna allow that to happen. And that just means that that space needs to be wet while you do that. Like I'm gonna move it up here into this wave a bit before it's completely dried out. This can be a little darker over here, mm. but not under where the curl will be. You need to keep that fairly green. And I wanna make sure that I remove any of the extra paint that I don't want from there. So what I'm doing, actually what I can do is I can take a paper towel and kind of bunch up into a little ball. And make a slightly rough edge there. See that rough edge? Oh yeah. A little bit. There we go. 
let's call this, uh, mm, well, I kind of need to keep going while it's wet. So I want to call this step, but we do need to do a little more while it's still wet. Okay. I want to get a little green into here. And if you'll notice to, you know, the wave as it goes kind of to the side gets a little more green. Just come here and now there's almost a a deep water event happening here. Hmm. And so between this zone and that zone, when you want to rinse out your brush completely from pigment, you have to do a rigorous, a rigorous little. And then I can come through and actually soften that and kind of control that bloom where I want it to be controlled, or I might need it to be controlled. Because there's areas you want it to be controlled and areas you won't want it to be controlled. And a little of my phthalo green and my ultramarine blue. Very good oceanic color. Under where I kind of remove things, I will go ahead and darken a little bit. That's going to help it do what it's doing. And then we'll just dash a little of this through a few places. Hopefully you guys are having some fun. I'm enjoying it. And let's call this, let's let's take this through this space as a step and then come in in our next in our next element, right? Because we really need this to have a little moment. In watercolor, you see what's like happening right here? That's sort of magic. I don't want to lose that as I'm painting. In watercolor, little magic moments are always occurring on your paper especially through uh, areas where you're working wet into wet and a bloom is happening. So you don't want to uh, prevent that moment from occurring. If you're not having bloom, it is usually because the paint you're using or the paper doesn't really do that. And you, there's not enough flowing agent in the paint. Like, but Crayola has a pretty decent bloom. Crayola will still bloom. And you can always buy something like Oxgall or Flow Aid to improve that. So doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out and buy all new, very bloomy paints. You can probably find an agent or a medium that will allow that to happen. Well, this is looking kind of good. I kind of am enjoying this a great deal. Now, I'm going to get into my, essentially, what is my number eight round, which is, again, this crazy brush. Welcome to... Uh, YouTube crazy brush. I'm getting into my ultramarine, which you can see is a very deep blue. And then I might even get some of my magenta into it and almost go into an indigo or a purple. And along this area where we're going to have some foam, I'm going to bring this darker color through this little zone here. I'm leaving some of the light paint that we had also kind of open. I want to make nice irregular little motions. And where the paper is still wet, I do want to carry that color into there because that creates a softening of edge, doesn't it? So this is sort of a dark value, and we'll bring this through. You can always come and get more ultramarine. Where there's a wave, you're going to want to start to curve strokes always with the wave. That's what helps inform that it is a wave. So you'll see me always kind of playing with that curling up. Now, I've got a couple techniques going here. My pressure is very light, and the paper isn't wet, and so I'm getting a little bit of a dry brush. Can you guys see that? Hold on, let me catch up with you. All right. 
over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, water seems to be beating up a little bit. Well, it beads up on the frisket. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> this is a moment waiting for many, many people to happen. So you can always tap it up very carefully if you're concerned. So that if you move your paper, it doesn't run anywhere or do anything you don't want it to do. Oh. I'm not picking my paper up, so it's not a worry. But that's something for you guys to be aware of is that your frisket may... Just letting it dry brush through the water as we come forward. That's like the opposite, isn't it, of what we were doing wet into wet, when the paper is dry, when the paper is wet. So we're letting that have a moment. Another thing I kind of want to do while I'm sitting here is I'm going to grab my frisket water. I want to make sure that I've got little splashes coming off this wave. So before my frisket up here is completely dried out, I'm going to have to kind of hand dot out some spots. And it's okay when you're painting to go, oh, wait, I think I have to do something over here. Right? Whoa, hold on a second. You went up off the screen. That was, there it is. Oh, let me get up there and see. Another thing I can do is come here in the front of this wave. I pulled this up and just hopefully the paper is dry enough. Again, you have to put the frisket down where the paper is dry. So what we're finger crossing is that we're dry enough to take some of this right now. We'll find out at the end. You can tell I'm kind of painting as a acrylic artist here. I'm just making sure there's a fr nice front froth of my wave that will stay frothy is what I'm doing. Just making sure. Making sure. So back to my water water. Mm -hmm. And back to my brush. And I'm going to keep painting little aspects of this wave. There's a nice kind of very crispy curve here and we want to for sure capture that. Maybe I'll get even into my phthalo there. Come along perhaps some of that foam. And then where we get into the wet, you can see it's softening out. So where edges are hard is where it's dry. Oh, yeah. Just play. If I kind of do these little curves up, these little triangles, that gives an impression of water, doesn't it? It really does. Little triangles. Watercolor paints water really well. It really does. It really does. Now, lots of shadows in this wave. Have we done a picture recently? Mm -hmm. okay. Did a picture every every time we take it a step. No, no, I'm, I just can't remember when we last did a step because I'm in my painting mode. Watercolor is a much more dreamy painting mode for me. So I don't know if it's been a minute. We're doing okay. We're probably here. You just put some frisket on there. and Yeah, we're adding some shadows. Let's add some shadows. So these are the dark values that can uh, happen in a painting. When I want to have a fine line, I really come up on the toe of my brush. Um, you need less brushes in watercolor than other mediums. Um, I actually think, and, and for those of you that follow me in acrylic, this next sentence, I don't want to give you a heart attack. Acrylic lessons will continue to come. You don't have to worry. But I think that watercolor is the medium of the future for people who are into painting. Hmm. It's, it's more portable. It le has less ecological impact than other mediums. Um, once you invest in the materials, you don't lose as many of those materials to the wear and tear that you do of other painting mediums. 
And I think what happens is people go to play with watercolor uh, and, and it's hard. So they then kind of get into the acrylics and some of the other stuff because they're maybe a little more accessible because they're drying times and everything. Right. But what I, what I say is I, I predict in, in under 10 years that maybe watercolor will take over where acrylic is. Mm. Doesn't mean I won't keep teaching acrylic. Yes, I will. But you enjoy the uh, the watercolor. I very much in, enjoy it, and it it does some things that are so unique to it, and it has such personality in it. You can really enjoy so many little moments of art. I'm just on the hair toe of the brush. Do we have any questions? Because I usually I see the chat, but I did not get myself together for the chat. I'm gonna grab some green over here. Actually, th everyone's really super in, in enjoying this. I'm um, so glad. <laughs> now, does uh, do, just can water go watercolor and gouache brushes can be mixed, right? Yes, but generally not with acrylic. So here's what you can, because they're both water-based mediums, right? You you can mix them um but acrylic the particulates of that because because that's a plastic right and so that gets into the ferrule of your brush and as it builds up it blows out the brush and it wears out the brush if you have natural hair brushes the ph of the acrylic makes those hairs and uh, bristles kind of brittle and break and so what happens with acrylic brushes is they wear down you have hmm. to replace them pretty often like yearly every couple of years um but with a watercolor brush, if you have good like habits of caring for it and you don't get your watercolor brush in acrylic, um, then you could probably have family members inherit your brushes. They are just as as if they're made by a good company, mm -hmm. they're forever. So we're just doing these little shadows that happen in a wave. Wow. It's just sort of fun for me to paint those. You know, just paint what you see. I can't wait for the frisket to come off. Oh, the frisket coming off is always the fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like the, ooh, well, it's it's good and bad, right? I think that that was a little bit wet when I put it down, so we'll see how that went. I come under my, my little frisket here and make sure that my wave has a nice dark kind of little line that's irregular. See how we go? So uh, I'm going to make a point of this was this class was in our ocean schedule that we had where we talked about last week we would do it and it went with the one that we previously did. But I'm going to do some uh, back to basics first step watercolors coming up. So be sure and hit the subscribe button if you've been wanting to learn the medium that you need some painting party kinds of classes. Those mm -hmm. are coming up. And then uh, is Joy still with us? Oh, yeah, I saw her out here. Um, I do believe we're going to try to do some type of questing event to go over just techniques, tips, materials, tools, that kind of thing to get everybody uh, uh, familiar with the uh, medium the way we did with acrylic. We're just going to continue to come here and dance this little toe down. Dancy, dancy on the toe of the brush. See how we're going? Uh-huh. Toe of the brush. Toe of the brush, toe of the brush. Notice that I was very kind of precious around that part of my painting. The reason that I chose to be precious there is because I'm going to add a little dark value here. It's just too beautiful to take out. Um, these are called passages in paintings. When you have a moment in a painting that you're just like, man, I like that too much. Yeah. And you try to preserve it, it's because you're trying to preserve a passage in the painting. I'm going to bring this down through the wave, kind of like a little shadow that's happening. 
when I'm painting a color over dry color and you can see the color underneath, that's called glazing. Okay. Just, you might not know. Might not. captured some of that shape. I'm going to hit this real quick with a hair dryer. That seems reasonable. Again, if you're joining us, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Join us in our new watercolor adventures. Um, we'll be doing these every Wednesday, I'm pretty sure. Uh, doing them here on Facebook, or no, on YouTube. And then we'll be uploading them to Facebook a little later in the evening so that uh, folks can find them. Oof. Let's call this a step and then come back and do some more. Yeah. And send a kid you to do my coffee. So? You huh? We don't have any kids. They're not useful for that. Incredibly useful. My kids are super useful. They're artistic and creative and heat coffee well. We got a studio microwave because we couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Woohoo! Steps! See? We move everything forward. Change the game. Change it up. So how are you guys liking this coming in? Like you can kind of see it taking shape. It starts to become, you know, what it is. A splashy bunch of waves. Like this would be very scary though if you were out on a little boat though in the ocean. You would be like, this is not fun. This is not cute for anybody. <laughs> Let's come to the top of this right here since we're starting to get this to dry. And I'm going to get back into... Maybe more of an aqua color in my in my mix, which is my phthalo green and my phthalo blue. Light pigment load. So heavy in the water, less pigment. And then a little trick here is to make sure that you get the splashy kind of unexpected shapes that you might want. In your waves, so you can kind of see how for this that might be even happening. Look at that right there. A little more phthalo blue. Listen to me, sip. And then here, maybe at the crashing point, you can bring a little depth into some of it. Now that things are drying up, you can control a bit where the brush strokes are going. So you can make those very sharp lines that happen in water. Oh. Aren't those beautiful? Very nice. They do that. They do that. I'll bring some of these out here. A little bit there. So again, it's so important that we preserve the paper with that frisket because that'll give us that light hairline of foam that could be going on up there. Yeah. And this is really quite a landscape. This is, again, a, a big boy in a long series of paintings. It really is. That got us to here. So, did everybody find the new channel, sir? Well, a lot of people have. I'm not sure if all of them yet have, but we'll keep. Sh everyone's agreed to share this up with their friends so they can oh, see yeah. it. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be really great, and I'm kind of glad to be here. Uh, I saw a, a artist friend of mine had a, a bunch of their content eaten by Facebook. Nom 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 nom. It nom, did it nom nom them, and it was they did they did not feel as lighthearted about that experience as we no. were describing it. But it occurred to us that we need to make sure that those watercolor lessons are preserved in some kind of way. <laughs> in various locations. Yes. Roku, here, all the places. 
Well, let's go back over here then. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put in some of the little water modeling that's up in this top pearl of the wave. So on top of the wonderful white that we have, there are these little dark values. They're so super important to capture. I'm trying to make sure the top of my wave has a few of those. I use the toe of the brush. I really love this brush. The Jasper Stardust is just a joy to use. But again, it's an Escoda. Yeah. Escoda is a brush company, and they specialize in watercolor brushes. Raphael is a brush company, and they're a very long-time Italian brush maker. Um, so, you know, that's why I chose those brushes. Because of that. You can kind of see that top of that sort of patterning that you might have. Come here and be like little shadows here and there. A little bit happening that way. This is looking all pretty good. So we've got this distant ocean. We should do something about that. I'm going to grab some of my ultramarine blue and my, and I'm going to come along my horizon. And as much as I can keep a straight line, I'm going to do my best. Uh -huh. And this is another place where having the frisket lets me paint in this ocean and keep those straight lines without ruining everything that I was trying to do. And I'm going to brush back and forth straight and let that kind of help inform that. Might even get into my phthalo blue. And if I take a little of the quinacridone into the phthalo blue, you're going to see I get a deep indigo. No. So that's wonderful. You can get some nice deep colors in the distance. Just try to keep the distant lines as level as you can. distance and I might take a bit of my crumpled up paper mm -hmm. and talk about some moments that might be happening out there that's like a subtractive method in painting yeah and we'll let that have a bit of a dry And I may come in with a little bit of my phthalo blue and some phthalo green, and I'll come into here as well and just layer this in. ways that were needed. Yeah, using a tape or a T-square to help that level line is a... Uh... It's key. Well, I mean, unless you have... If you're one of the people who's blessed with a very, very steady hand, I guess don't, don't be too concerned about it. But, you know, I'm adding some just green into this while I paint, like into the wet. Um, but it, if you don't, then yeah, it can really help to have that T squared to help create that more level line. Mm -hmm. And you can even frisk it your far away line if you want to. When you do it, you can lay down some frisket. I'm going to add a darker value along here just to make sure that my horizon sort of has that. Seems reasonable. And then uh, kind of come on the toe here. that these little wave spots look like wave spots. You know, they're just far away. They're doing their little thing. We've got a little bit more of 
I think, you know, some of the deep indigo that we could do out here. While we're letting everything kind of have its little dry. Mm -hmm. You can define this wave a bit. There we go. Just giving it a little bit of thought. Looking good. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. And coming along behind that little foam and shading that up into that main wave. Now, this combination of teal, turquoise, aqua, this is a lot of people's favorite color. But yes, it's my a, favorite. This, is a, this falls into that sea foam green, uh, you know, aquas. Definitely that whole. And you know, the thing is, guys, listen, in the comments, if you're new here, you've never seen me, you don't know who I am, you're just like, I want to learn how to watercolor, and this lady isn't answering my questions. Ask the questions in the comments below. Because chances are, if I see a lot of you guys going like, I don't, I don't know how to mix any of the sea colors, I'll do a whole video on how to mix watercolors for colors. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can come in and do any of my uh, color videos that I have, because a lot of times between acrylic and watercolor, there's very similar principles. But, you know, I don't mind being like, this is how you get all the ocean colors. Yeah. Does not bother me at all. Now I'm going to sort of dry this. Dry it. And that's just because I want everything to sort of stop where it is. In watercolor, a lot of times you just allow the paper to rest because you want things to resolve in the way that they want to resolve. And that's what you're looking for. But in this particular case, I want everything to stop where it is. So I'm going to dry it. And again, I can only do this because I'm using this one. If you're using another one, walk away. Walk away. Go have, okay. a, have a chocolate, cup of coffee, some chips, watch a show. You'll be fine. Okay. Now, before you walk away, before you hit pause, I got a secret thing I need you to do. It's not so secret. But hit the subscribe button. Got to do that so that we can remember this. I don't normally do the subscribe subscribe but this is new this is our first time doing it so we need everyone to, to like subscribe and be part of the community so that we can do this more and if you click the bell thing then you'll get a notification when we do it and if you would like to sign let's see oh hold on psh, psh. you want to do a step gotta do a step because right. we're about to do sky about to sky it up it's looking really good i like it Happy little ocean painting. And, and you know, and again, in certain, in certain mediums, it can be really intimidating to paint certain topics. Um, I would say pools and e everything water and watercolor is just worth doing. And, and I'm going to keep exploring these really advanced frisket techniques because I think that you guys will just love them. We can do Versailles. We can just do all of the things. All the things. All the things. All right. Now I'm going to come up and pre-wet my sky like you do. And I may get... Clean water, because I, so you, if you'll notice that the water is pigmented here, I want water that isn't. Huh? Oh, sure. Just, just for a second, I was like, is it in my coffee? <laughs> don't put your brush in your coffee. However, um, I don't use, um, you can get pure cadmium pigments. You can get the pigments uh, that you might in oils or acrylics and watercolor. I don't really ever do so I don't worry as much about my brush in coffee as much as I would with say acrylic um because I'm not running anything with the cadmiums I'm gonna come along here and we remember from the beginning of the video what we said about the paint goes where the water is so if you have water that's where the paint's gonna go and that's why we put out the frisket I'm going to do this right here. And I'm going to take a little of my Payne's Gray and just get uh, maybe some of my blue and, you know, sea colors into it. So it's a bit stormy. I'm going to pull this up from the top and just really let this work out. 
I will always leave open spaces in my um, sky paintings, uh, and that's just allow everything to soften into it. I'm always super glad that I did. And it's always just worth it. And then I'll put a little more of my gray out and get a little more of my blue, a little more gray and blue. It can be phthalo. It can be ultramarine. Either is really okay. And we're going to come around here and kind of tap in some very watery, oh, darker see, clouds. I got to get this. Hold on. Baby. Okay. You want to catch this? Good. Okay. We're going to make some watery little wet into wet clouds that are oh, up here. Oh, it's going to get the focus. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. There you go. That's what you needed. So besides creating that sense of uh, guy using the the irregular technique, I'm going to come through and create a sense of stormy sky, letting this go wet into wet. Rinse that out, and while that's all having kind of a thought about its life, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna do some crazy. I'm gonna get some opera pink. You get any bright pink that you want, and some of my nickel azo yellow. These two together are quite a jam. So is the transparent pyrrole orange. Maybe some just more pure pink, too, just to dramatic it up. Yeah. Yeah, we all, all things come to a halt for the bloom. Yeah, the bloom is everything. Maybe some of this yellow. There you go. Come along this top of this like cloud form here with this pink. Mm -hmm. Come through here perhaps and let it blend into the gray. This is going to create this like crazy sky. Now, this all really needs to dry and soften and do its thing. So if we have questions, I'll sip some coffee Let's while we're letting here. it have a rest. There were some things. And a resolution. Here. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. I saw a good question that came up that you were talking about. I'll just scroll back up here a little bit. Okay. What do you think about those Escoda brushes? Love them. I love the Escoda line. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love Jasper Stardust brush. He does a really good job of returning and recrimping. Absolutely. But like I, I won't lie to you, it's not a fast turnaround, and it's sort of like you've got to like convince him that you get to have a brush made for you, because <laughs> he's got some back orders. Uh, but the line itself, Escoda, is a really fantastic line. I like the Raphael. I like the Escoda uh, quite a lot. I know Princeton has some great watercolor brushes. You want a ferrule that's seated well. You want the hairs of your brush to come to a fine point. You want it to have a nice thirsty belly. So if you don't know, just in case you just walked in, you've been here with me a minute, you know all this. So the parts of your brush are the toe, the belly, the heel, the ferrule, and the handle. The crimp is what keeps your brush super solid and, you know, keeps all the business in sort of stable. On a watercolor brush, you want it to have, see how this belly is sort of rounded out a bit? All right, here's my acrylic brush, and here's a watercolor brush. It's huh, great. Here you go. Learn a thing. Um, so notice that my acrylic brush is very straight. It does not have an ample belly. There we go. It doesn't have an ample belly, does it? Yeah. It's a very slender belly. But this brush has this bow out, and this is about how the brush maker uh, collected the hairs and arranged the hairs. Probably, I think this is squirrel. Oh, just so you know, in case you don't know, when you see camel, there was no camel used in the making of your brush. There's pony and squirrel and a bunch of other animals, but whenever they say camel, 
They just mean a bunch of stuff. Huh. Um, so I don't know if this is Camel or not because I didn't look. I have the exact Escoda listed so you can find it. Um, and notice that it comes to this very fine point. And this comes to a fine point too, but I had to fight for this in my acrylic world. And even so, can you see the difference of points between these two? Oh, yeah. Right? Like I wish my 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 acrylic brushes could have that the, the point that is like that. And, you know, I'll look at this other sort of a Escoda here and then this quill. So even on the quill, you can see it has similar similar aspects. The belly on this synthetic one isn't quite as ample as the other one, but notice that they made it thick enough at the heel so you get the belly anyways, and the point is just crazy. But this, you get like a perfect little ample, hungry, hobbity belly on your brush with a nice tip. And if you like, you know, D&D, &D, this is the most hobbity of brushes, right? Look how hobbity this brush is. It is, it is very it's just hobby. Gandalf's brush. It's just fantastic. So, you know, that's something to think about when, you know, it's going on. I'll look at this as having a nice rest. So sometimes you have to let your oh, watercolor that, rest. Oh, there's another good question that Jody had. It took me a minute to understand it because it was, you know. Mm -hmm. So in regards to the palette, on your color Thalo Blue, is mm -hmm. it red shade or green shade? Green shade. There we go. And they okay. do have that in watercolor. So watercolors that I recommend, Senelia, the one with the honey, I love. Um, I love uh, Daniel Smith, who doesn't? We all love Daniel Smith. I love M. Graham, which is not that expensive a brand. I really like the M. Graham. I love Core from Golden's Watercolor. Um, I love Holbein. Mm -hmm. And I have all of those here. All those paints are here in my paint bucket. If you want to see my actual paint bucket, it has all those. So, you know, I'm not, I, it's a mix of brands. They're all really, really good. Um, you know, watercolor comes in pans or tubes. When I'm traveling, I use uh, the dry pans because those are the easiest to travel with. I love like the travel set from Core. But when I'm sitting and I'm doing big washouts like this, it's nice to have uh, big thirsty bits. This palette, guys, <laughs> you're going to see it listed. You're going to look up the price and be like, what? Just use a peel. Just use a butcher tray, a white butcher tray, right? White porcelain butcher tray is the kind of just regular everyday version of this. I just really love this palette and I work every single day in art. So I treated myself to it. It is not a requirement of your art journey. Mm. If, if you're painting all the time and you want to get it, it's really wonderful to use porcelain because the reason porcelain is better than plastic is plastic will bead and porcelain wets out. That's why. All right, let's, we've got a little more to do here. Um, while this is still a bit closed off before I remove the frisket, I may take my brush and see how I put some yellow and pink out there? Yeah. I kind of want to then put some, some of that here a bit maybe. It's a weird thing to want to like kind of mix in, but if you're going to have it, you might as well have it if it's in the sky, right? Oh, wow. That's amazing. So, thinking in it, when you look at things, sometimes you'll think at them and you'll be like, hmm. Now I'm going to just sort of soften this up here. Oh, it's all frisketed. Oh, that's fantastic. Because that means I get to do a wet out thing. All right. So, I'm going to dry everything. Again? Yep. And then we're going to take a step and then we're going to remove the frisket. Oh. Stepping in the right direction, I see. So thank you guys for coming and hanging out. I think I've reminded you a lot to subscribe and to do all those things. So I'm going to surprise you and invite you to subscribe because you already probably had to hit the bell or do all those things. Don't forget to go to our website. Check all that out. You can, if you'd like to get a text message notification, we can help you there too. You just need to send a message. Doo -doo. Wait, nope, bring that back. Make, go, oh, there we go. Send a message, all one word, the Art Sherpa, to the phone number 33222, and we will notify you when we do this live thing, wherever we may be. And that's how you can come join us. Oh, and thank you for all the likes and the comments and the shares. The shares are particularly important right now. If you share us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, um, MySpace, if you've still got a page, even there can help. It does get the word out. So, you know, all the places, Twitter, 
TikToks, inter the Twitters, the intertubes, all of the tubes, the places where they connect up, that you share us up there, and that'll help. Um, don't use heat. Heat's bad, especially for frisket, especially for watercolor, mostly because it accelerates the way that things happen, and uh, it's just not necessarily good. I think we have it enough where, again, can't do this with every frisket. Just this one. Again, I think we have it dry enough where I can pull it, and then we can do this really cool cloud technique, which hopefully will work, and then we'll get to see the whole painting because that's okay. when the frisket comes off. Well, the I'm painting gonna, is I'm revealed. I'm going to put up a step and take a picture. Could you explain what wet out means? So when you have dry paint in your palette or uh, actually even when you squeeze it out and you want to take a brush and move it around, you're wetting it out. Right, you're you're moving it out. And if I wanted to mix a color into that, see how that stays incorporated and it gathers back together and it doesn't bead and pull apart. Very important. But again, you can just do a white porcelain butcher tray, same effect. I just love the Tom Lynch palette. I just like it. It was it's heavy and it's gorgeous and I wanted it, so I got it. Um, and it's been wonderful. I'm not sorry at all. Uh, and then I used a, uh, I used the, PBO porcelain pen to write the names of the paint on it. Hmm. So basically how it comes off is let's get in there and so they can see it. Ready to see the boogers come off. Let's remove the boogers from the painting. Boogers. <laughs> so that's uh, those are frisket boogers. Serious business frisket boogers. And this is when you discover how your frisket job went. Whoa, that's so cool. Right? And again, we're, we're at the basic frisket. Oh, that's cool. Level of. That makes the. Look at that. Is that little booger in the middle removable at the splashy? All the boogers are removable. See, there's a booger, and it just sticks to the rubber cement picker upper. Um, if you have a, you know, there a latex allergy, this is real latex gone. from the plant, so that's just something to think of. Um, there are other masking agents that may work better for you if that is the case. But this is how we keep the white paper. And there's a kit where that tool comes with it. Yeah, and, and I've included it in the just, you know, uh, there's a kit. Uh, so one of them is with eight ounces, one of them is with two ounces, and so they have a different price. Also, always check the prices of your art supplies, um, like on Camel, 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 if you're buying from Amazon, just to make sure that the price didn't get jacked up on you because interest went up. Mm -hmm. eh. Boogers. And this is what, see, boogers also pick up boogers. <laughs> So if you didn't have one, all you got to do is get one started, and then you can be like, uh, my boogers will pick up the boogers, too. So boogers pick up boogers. It's a booger to have boogers. Yeah. And we did a lot, right? So we had a lot on here. There's also nibs and stuff, and you can use calligraphy pens. We're going to really get into, we're going to have an advanced frisket class uh, pretty soon. And advanced mediums. We just got to get through this, I, it, this acrylic April thing I'm doing. I just have to survive that. But we are gonna uh, we're gonna watercolor during Curlic April. We'll just meet over here. They don't gotta know. <laughs> mm. So you can kind of see how those effects were preserved. That's the white. Isn't that great? This is gonna be really the bomb right here. This splashy is everything. There you go. That's the frisket off. Yeah. And that, that's just wonderful, right? Yeah, it is. And if you get in here, you can see like this splash just really was held and preserved. Um, you know, completely. It's just wonderful. I like it very, very much. Now I'm going to get my brush. I like the multicolor of the splash. And I'm going to put my... Opera pink into my phthalo, which is going to give me kind of a magenta. That before you. And I'm going to come here and just very lightly 
Gonna pull this out. Ooh. Another dimension. Yeah, I'm gonna silver line these little clouds this way. Oh, that's so cool. And then I'll just blend this down in here. So the splashes are there, but then they're kind of blended into the clouds. It's sort of fun. You can always get the gray. Kind of make these two areas marry as they need to. Really fun sky. Let's do a similar thing here. I'm going to come here and leaving the little white edge. Pretty good. Comes along here and we haven't lost our horizon. Then, you know, into our gray, blue. And then you can come into this and really play wet into wet with this. Mm. You get this wonderful kind of sunset effect. I just don't think you get really any other way. Then through some of this, it's nice to take almost like a like a lavender or just a, like a lavender gray, and you can then. Oh wow! Yeah. Shade some of the sea foam. Mm -hmm. It's kept white. It didn't lose its white. It just is a little more than that now. You can even do some here. And again, that just breaks up what that is. And then maybe a little bit along here. I can get my yellow. Oh, this is also a little wet. It's that kind of glazes there. And then I can come back with my phthalo blue and a fairly wet brush. Yeah. And also oh, splashes. splatter a little bit of dark, which is kind of nice. And then if it gets heavy anywhere, I can... Just nice sometimes to make sure. And you remember, guys, you can mask off something. So if you're like, oh, I don't want any here or there, you can, you know, take something to cover it. So that gets to be a little bit fun. And then piece back in through with your brush. I think having a little splatter is always a 
Nice little touch on these. Oh, yeah. You can also use my splatter brush if you want to have more control. That's perfectly okay. Or dotting tool works as well. Got that. And then I can come here and pull those together. So you just play, come back. And then at some point, you've just got to be like, you know, did I get it? I do think it's a good idea to kind of tone some of the uh, foam up front. Mm -hmm. right? Like it is, it did get held out. It is reserved. But just to use like kind of a tone. And this is very wetted out. I'm going to use my number 12 is good. And I'm going to just make sure that some of it is a little bit shaded. See? The dry brush, kind of coming through and making sure some of the foam, some of it should be quite bright, but some of it should have a little shading in it. Let your water fills. And then it's kind of, kind of fun to go through and touch up the last of the reflection that is through the curl of the wave. So it's not so. Ah! Uh huh. There you go. That is wow. just a quick little aqua landscape that you can do with watercolor and some frisket. Just a quick little one. You got to scoot it to the right and sign it. Scoot it to the right and sign That's it. Other right. Your other right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. All right. I know I am. <laughs> <clears throat> it's just a thing. So um, I'll sign over here in the corner. There you go. Just a crazy little stormy day landscape. Mm -hmm. So you can play, and there's a bunch of frisket techniques you may not be familiar with. Uh, we'll come back and we'll do some like two world stuff next week. That'll be real fun. Uh, very one hooty. Um, thank you guys for your time and consideration today. I really appreciate it. Oh, everyone was loving this. Where can we find the traceable? I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'll scan this and I'll. <laughs> to make it and put it on the website, the on website for everybody, yeah. Yeah. The www.theartsherpa.com. Theartsherpa.com. That's a, that's a convenient, easy thing to remember. If you thought this was cool, be sure and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see something in watercolor. Look at uh, that. <laughs> you want to see a technique or something expressive or something sort of abstracty landscape, you just put it in the comments below. Especially in the early days of this channel, you guys will really be. Well, actually, when did my when does my community not tell me what? To, you guys always let me know what you want to paint. So just let me know what you want to paint in the description down below. Um, you ready for the sign out, babe? I'm ready. Be I'm good sure. to yourself. Be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye bye. Bye guys. <laughs>